Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Talia. I'm an artist and interior stylist in LA and I help people affordably curate more beautiful and functional spaces. In today's video, I am very excited to talk about two of the best items I have bought into my home, two of the best items that I can recommend to you guys in your home if you're living in a space where you don't have a on-site laundromat or if you don't have the space or the hookups for a conventional washer and dryer. Now, as you can already tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about my Panda Portable Washer and Dryer, and this is going to be a long-term review. I actually purchased these devices in November of 2016, so we are, we've just passed four years in total of me owning these machines, and I'm going to give you the full rundown, all of the accessories that you'll need any problems I've had with the devices and my overall thoughts which if you couldn't tell already are generally positive if you don't have these machines and you think you could use them I highly recommend that you go purchase them but if you want to hear more details let me get into the review so obviously I have older versions of these devices and so the technology has updated quite a bit in terms of the dryer from what I can tell the upgraded dryers are basically the same as my dryer the buttons might have changed a little bit and I think there are some devices that have a digital readout but for the most part the dryer works the way the dryer works and these portable dryers work very similar to a standard dryer that you'd find in a laundromat or one that you'd buy for your home. The washing machine on the other hand is a different story. So you can tell visibly that the device that I have is very different from a standard washing machine. It is a two basin device which means the washing is done in one basin and then the spinning where you spin out the excess water before you put your clothes in the dryer or also spin out your excess water and soap between cycles, that is done in a completely separate basin. So the newer versions of the Panda are single basin devices which are very similar to a washing machine that you would buy standard size and I will say that I am looking forward to if and when my device breaks and I have to replace it I'm going to obviously upgrade to the single basin device it's a lot more work moving your clothes in and out from one basin to the other uh, but as of right now because my machine isn't broken i don't feel inclined to replace it so my review is obviously going to be geared towards the devices that i have the usage and issues that you might have with the single basin automatic panda washer might be different than the issues that I have with mine, different than the setup, but I hope this gives you a good starting point on what to expect with a portable washing machine and also with Panda's customer service and the quality of their devices. So before I get into showing you how I set up my devices to use, I want to talk about some of the accessories that I'm going to recommend that you pick up right off the bat. For the dryer, you're gonna wanna get a pack of dryer filters. These are sold by a bunch of different companies online. So typically the dryer filters have come in a pack with about four to six of the larger back filters and one to two of the smaller front machine filters. I'm gonna show you what both of these filters look like when I'm done with my machine after four loads of uh, dryer lint and all that stuff. The front filter is completely clean after being in the dryer for four loads of clothes and the back filter is pretty packed with lint even though I did clean it out halfway through. So this is only two loads worth of lint on the back filter. Definitely gonna be cleaning the back filter more and replacing it more so the quantity that you'll get in any typical dryer filter pack is appropriate. The next dryer accessory I would recommend is one that I actually don't have anymore. I purchased it and returned and it's the Better Vent Indoor Dryer Vent. So the Better Vent is something that you can put on the back of your machine if you're not going to be able to vent it out of the window. It's going to collect excess 
humidity and lint and steam that's meant to go you know toward a window if you cannot position your machine that way in your home i purchased this device based on the incredible reviews that it has on amazon but as it turns out i was able to set up my dryer so that it vented out my window if you're worried about excess humidity if you're in like a really small room with your dryer or if you're not going to be able to angle your dryer out of a window the better vent indoor vent is something that you might want to consider there's quite a few more accessories I'm going to recommend for your washing machine and again I'm recommending these for use with my device my specific two basin device I think some of these you probably are going to want to use if you have the newer model or an older model but some of them I'm not sure you might not necessarily need them with the one basin device so first up I'm going to recommend our lint collectors for your washing machine the washing machine actually has a built-in lint collector and I use two additional varieties one is just a little floaty that you throw into the water when the machine is going it has a little net and a floaty thing and it floats around the top of your wash and collects excess lint in the device. When you're draining out water from the machine, the water and lint passes through the machine's built-in lint device, which should capture as much lint as possible. And then I have a second uh, lint catching device. They're just these sleeves that you add on the end of the hose that leads out into the sink. Now, technically, technically I'm not supposed to have a washing machine in here. So I really don't want to be getting a lot of um, lint down my landlord's sink. And I'm going to show you on screen at the end of four washes in one day, how much lint each device collected. The little floaty device, the built-in device, and then the lint sleeve on the drain before the water actually exits into the sink. Obviously, you're gonna see that the built-in device, the lint trap, is the least effective, so I would recommend getting at least one additional method of collecting lint if you don't wanna get the floaty, or maybe if you don't need the floaty with how this single basin machine works, definitely the lint sleeve so you can just capture anything that escapes the machine before it goes down your drain would be highly recommended the next thing I'm going to recommend are some laundry bags now my device does not have an agitator that kind of pole in the middle of the machine that clothes spin around and basically you have your clothes spinning in one way and then spinning the other way and then spinning this way and then it for 15 minutes back and forth so if you can imagine that in a big pool of water anything that has a large hole anything that has a long sleeve it's going to end up in a knot and i've literally spent no joke five six minutes untying sleeves and legs and like <laughs> cloth belts just out of a giant knot after all my clothes went one round in the washing machine. So I would recommend picking up some laundry bags. I have not found a good brand of laundry bag that does not end up with a hole or without a zipper, but you know, you have to make do. And basically I put everything that has a long sleeve or a long pant leg or a large hole so like your underwear or like this kind of shirt with this kind of thing this is a nightmare this here oh a nightmare these kind of things definitely go into the laundry bags and then other stuff like shorts um short sleeve shirts socks and stuff like that that can go directly into the basin so the next two items i'm going to recommend are kind of random but this is a four year review and I'm giving you all of the goods that you're gonna need to have a successful use of these devices. So I'm gonna recommend that you pick up some tape and a shallow basin to collect excess water when you're done using the machines. So when you're draining the water out of your washing machine, there is a built-in hose that leads out of the device. It has a little hook that hangs hangs over into your sink or wherever you're going to be draining your water and theoretically that hook 
can stay, you know, secured onto wherever you have hung it so that water goes where you are intending the water to go. But I've had it happen more than once that mm, that hook did not stay and the drain fell off the side of my counter and then water spilled everywhere onto the floor. Now, knowing what I know, I'm telling you that I'd recommend just getting some cheap plastic tape. This clear tape from the dollar store is what I use. I just put a little bit over the hose. It lasts all of the all of my washings, like as many loads as I have. And this is gonna help you make sure that you are not cleaning excess water off of the floor because your drain hose fell off the sink. In terms of the drain pan, this is again something I picked up from the 99 cent store. It's a drain pan like you'd use if you were draining oil out of the bottom of your car. And I like to get rid of any excess water that pulls up in the bottom of my device before I put it away. Panda recommends that you do this with your washing machine if you're gonna go an extended period of time without using it. I probably go seven to 10 days in between every round of laundry. And after every round, I get rid of the excess water in my devices. So basically, if you are draining your water into a sink where the water has to fight against gravity to go up the drain and out, I just like to take the hose off of the side of the counter away from the sink and let it drain somewhere that's closer to the floor so that more water can get out not having to fight against gravity. The reason that you want to do this is because pooled standing water anywhere is not an issue that you want to deal with. I actually had a fungus gnat infestation a few years ago from one of my plants and some of the gnats got into the washing machine and were hanging out in the pooled water at the bottom of it and I could tell that I started to find little dead gnat bodies in the drain hose as they were trying to escape. Disgusting. It's not really what I'm looking to enjoy with my laundry experience so I would definitely recommend getting rid of as much excess water that pools in the bottom of your machines after every single use. The last accessory I would recommend is kind of optional but it's my tower so the dryer actually comes with some tools and accessories for you to mount the machine on the wall. The dryer stand that I have literally lets me have my washer and dryer in the floor space of one device. So I would highly recommend this if you are looking to get both of these devices and you're short on floor space. I actually have only had the tower for two years. The first two years that I owned these devices, I had the dryer on a rolling cart on the floor. The washing machine is easy enough to pick up and carry, move over to the water source. And I have read that a lot of the newer model single basin washing machines have like uh, wheels so you can kind of tip them over and roll them around like a bin but the dryers are kind of like not built to be moved around like that so definitely if you're not going to have them be stationary you're going to want a cart or something to reel them around and the tower I would highly recommend because it is easy enough to move the tower with the dryer on top doesn't topple over, it's nice and safe and secure, and like I said, an amazing space saver for these two devices. In terms of cleaning products, I've used pretty much everything with both my washer and dryer. The washing machine, I've used liquid detergent, powdered detergent, powdered additives like boric acid, uh, bleach, fabric softener. The only thing I haven't used in the washing machine is a Tide Pod, so I'm not really sure if the agitation in the machine would break apart a Tide Pod the way it was meant to, but um, if the tangling of the clothes in the machine is any indicator, I don't think it should be a problem, I just haven't tested it. In the dryer, I've used dryer sheets as well as those dry cleaning sheets that are supposed to turn your dryer into a dry cleaner. 
So I don't really see you having any issue using these devices with any standard soaps. So now I kind of wanted to quickly walk you through my setup for these devices. Obviously it's going to be different from person to person depending on where your devices live in your home and how far they have to move from where they rest to where they go to be connected to water and power. I have quite a bit of moving around to do in my kitchen but still the overall convenience of being able to do laundry in my house is it can't be beat so no matter how many plants and stuff I have to move around it really can't be beat and so I have to move everything in front of that to get them out of the way the first thing I do is pick up the rug off the floor then I move all of my plants off of the washer and dryer and the plant stand so the plant stand is easier to move then I pull the washer and dryer stand carefully out so that I can remove the washing machine. And like I mentioned earlier, the washing machine is light enough for me to pick it up and just swing it over to the sink area where I get that set up. So I plug in the washing machine and then I take the drain hook off the side of the device and tape it to the side of the sink. So I like to go through these steps in a certain order so that I don't forget anything because I have forgotten to take the drain hook off the side of the machine and then drained water all over my floor. That was fun. I'll usually start adding water to the machine while I get my clothes ready. I'll put the soaps and additives into the device and let them slosh around, let the water get nice and soapy before I add my clothes. There are only two settings available on my version of the washing machine and there's no difference in the actual speed or intensity of the spin. It's just the length of the time that the machine is spinning in one way. So I usually just set all of my clothes to wash on the high cycle. in the wash basin until the machine stops. So here is where my setup and washing procedures is going to vary drastically from someone that has one of the updated versions of the washing machine, especially the automatic version. So my version of the device is fully manual and once the machine stops washing, I have to come back into the kitchen and turn the washing machine on drain to drain the excess water out of the washing bin. From here, I can do one of two things. A traditional washing machine would drain out the water from the wash cycle and then spin out any excess soapy water from the clothes. Because I have the two basin device, if I want to spin out my clothes in between the wash and rent cycle, I have to manually move them from the wash bin into the spin bin and stand over the machine while that is getting done. I don't do that every time I'm washing my clothes. If I'm washing whites, I will use bleach and I always spin out excess bleach in between my wash and rinse cycle. But for the rest of my clothes, I just start the rinse cycle and then do an extra long spin cycle before I put my clothes into the dryer. The rinse cycle, I will put the clothes in the spinner. So even if they don't get spun out in between the wash and the rinse cycle, I do always spin the excess water out before they go into the dryer. And the spinning action on this device is pretty powerful. Powerful. I would say that if you were going to buy the washing machine and not get the dryer, you could very easily air dry 
or line dry your clothes and have them be bone dry within a few hours after spinning them out in this device. takes between two and three spin loads to get all of the clothes from the washing basin completely spun out and able to put into the dryer. My dryer capacity is listed at 8.8 .8 pounds whereas the washing machine capacity is around 10 pounds. I've not had any issue getting clothes from the washing machine into the dryer. So a full load of clothes from my washing machine fits comfortably into the dryer. I have had it happen though that I was able to get a large weighted blanket into the washing basin, but it was too large to get into the spinning basin. Obviously one large item can't be broken up into two to three spinning rounds in the spinner. Again, this is not gonna be an issue if you've got the updated one basin model. Anything that can be fit into the washing washing basin is going to be able to get spun out because all of that work is done in one spot. So my loads are pretty consistently moving from washer to dryer, clothes coming out of the dryer for the next load to go in. And I think that has something to do with how much extra time and effort it takes to complete a washing cycle. I think if I had the fully automated set it and forget it style washing machine that the washing cycle would be done quicker and therefore I might have to wait a little while while the clothes in the dryer dried so that I can move things around. I've had with these devices over the years has been water ending up on the floor after using the washing machine and unfortunately for me and I guess fortunately for you if you're in the market to buy one of these devices almost all of those instances have been due to user error. So I already mentioned that I have the system of taping the drain hose to the side of my sink as soon as I set up the washing machine. I do that because I have had it happen more than once now that I forgot to set the drain hose up to actually drain into my sink and absentmindedly, you know, turned the drain on when I was done washing a load only to realize that water was spilling all over my kitchen floor. So definitely get the tape to make sure that your hose stays in place when you put it on your sink and also so that you have that process in mind so that you even remember to set the drain hose up appropriately. I've also forgotten to turn off the faucet when filling up the washing machine. So as I've already mentioned, this device is manual. You have to monitor the amount of water that's going into the device and then turn off the water at the faucet so that it's not flowing into the washing machine anymore. The newer devices are fully automatic, meaning you can turn the faucet on and the machine will regulate when water needs to come into the device and stop flowing into the device. But I again have had it happen where I forgot that I was letting water fill up my washing machine and stepped outside, started chatting with the neighbor only to come back inside to find my kitchen. You guessed it, flooded. So, <laughs> so that's definitely a pain that you will want to avoid because that can also um, really damage the 
washing machine itself like I had water coming out of every hole it was completely water jammed thankfully it doesn't seem to have had any lasting effect that was over a year ago but I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> I've also had water end up on the floor just from having the machine splash it out as it's going on it's you know back and forth that is easily solved by closing the lid which sometimes I forget to do but you know the only other instance I've had where water has ended up on the floor with using my washing machine is when I tried to put hot water into the device and that is actually going to be the major drawback or negative point that I have to take away from the Panda is that you cannot use them with hot water. That is my old version as well as the new version. Now there are some people in the Amazon comments that have all sorts of workarounds and recommendations and I certainly wouldn't be recommending that you go against the manufacturer's recommended use of their appliances. Um, what I think is happening with the hot water issue with the device is that the tubes draining the water out of the device are made of plastic and so when they get too hot whatever they're connected to I think the plastic starts to swell and water is able to seep out of places where it shouldn't be because the connections that those tubes are making underneath the machine inside the machine are temporarily loosened from the hot water. I say this because when you are filling water up from the faucet into the machine, if the water coming from the faucet is too hot, it actually makes the plastic of the inlet hose expand so that the hose will fall off of the faucet. And I think basically that's the same thing that's happening underneath the machine except the hose isn't falling anywhere it's just kind of loosening up and letting water that's supposed to be draining out of the machine get on the floor. I also say that because even though I've had this issue happen twice where I got water that was too hot inside the machine and I had some leakage underneath the machine there were no residual or long-standing effects with my washing machine so after the machine cooled off after all the hot water passed through I'm assuming that the plastic whatever kind of connectors are in the machine kind of shrunk back to their normal size because the next time I was able to wash my clothes drain the cold water out and there was no issues my only other issue that I've had with the washing machine is the spinning motor overheating the spinner definitely is working overtime to get the excess water out of your clothes and like I said it gets your clothes to the point where you could like air dry them and they wouldn't take that long to dry so when I'm moving clothes in from the washing basin into the spinner and they are soaking wet I always like to turn the spinner on and let at least one round of the excess water get spun out of the clothes and ejected from the machine before I turn on the inlet hose to let clean water in to rinse out any of the excess soap that's still stuck in the clothes. What I'm trying to avoid is having wet clothes in the spinner and then adding more water on top of that because I feel like the spinning area it just gets too oversaturated with water and sometimes the motor just burns out. Again, this is not an issue as of now that has caused uh, irreparable damage to the machine. Every single time I've had the issue where I've overheated the spinning motor, I was able to stop it, continue on washing whatever was in the wash basin, and by the time those clothes were ready to move into the spinner, the spinning motor had cooled down enough that it was able to be used again. So again, no lasting effects from overuse of the device. I think that really speaks well to the quality. So lastly, I want to talk about my two instances in interacting with Panda customer service. So my first instance of needing to deal with customer service was after I had my dryer delivered. I could tell 
from the holes and dents in the box that my dryer had seen some things on its way to being delivered to me and when I brought it home and plugged it in it was generating heat but the tube wasn't spinning so I sent a message to Panda on Facebook but in the interim I was able to figure out again in the Amazon comments that my issue was a band inside of the dryer that had been dislodged during transit. The recommendation was to take the back off of the device, put this band back around the tube and that you'd be good to go which is what I did and was indeed the case. So that all happened in one night. The next day I woke up with a response to my message from Panda on Facebook basically telling me the same thing about the band coming dislodged during shipment and how to go in and take off the back and reattach this band. So I'd already figured out the solution to my problem, but it was nice to get, first of all, a response so quickly from someone at Panda and also just have confirmation in writing in case I had any other issues with the device down the line and they were trying to claim that I voided the warranty by taking the back off. At least I could provide this and say, this is what you told me to do because I had an issue with how the machine was shipped. So that was great. The second issue that I had with Panda where I had to reach out to customer service actually again was with the dryer and it was the opposite issue of the one I had before so this time the tube was spinning but no heat was being generated to dry the clothes this time I actually I was really nervous because this is now four years out since I've purchased these devices any warranty that I would have hoped to have is long gone so I just looked up Panda customer service number on Google, called the first number that popped up and actually got a human being on the phone from Panda, a human customer service representative. Without the hoopla, without having to talk to a robot, I was surprised as hell. So this person was super helpful. She listened to everything, told me what she thought was the problem. She took down my email address and then sent me an email that followed up with instructions on how to go into the machine and determine whether or not what she thought was wrong. Basically, another band had broken into in the machine. Um, so she sent me instructions on how to diagnose if that was indeed the issue, which it was, and then the email also also included links to come back to the website to purchase a replacement band if it was in fact the band that had broken in the dryer that needed to be replaced. So I got the email, I took the back off my dryer, was able to identify that it was indeed a band that had broken. So I think it was like $17 or something it was pretty inexpensive and I ordered it online but I ordered the wrong size I don't know what happened I caught it pretty immediately and called back the customer service people at Panda and got the same very friendly person on the phone she told me that she would reach down to the shipping department and make sure that they put the right size replacement band in the mail for me. So I wasn't expecting actually to receive the right size band in the mail. I got a confirmation email that included the size that I had ordered, which was the incorrect size. And when I actually got my package in the mail, the printout of my order said the band that I ordered, which was the incorrect size. However, inside that package was indeed the correct band that I needed to fix my dryer. So I couldn't be more satisfied with that exchange, really. They helped me fix my mistake, and I had two instances where I called this company and was able to get someone on the phone immediately who was able to answer my question, which is, incredibly rare. 
So that's it everybody. I know this has been a long video, but I wanted to pack in all of my information to spare about these devices for anyone who's looking to purchase them. I think having a washer and dryer in your home has been a game changer. I absolutely will not ever go back to using a public laundromat again, not if I can help it. And if you are considering buying these devices, I hope that this video will help you prepare, show you some things that you might want to consider purchasing along with your device, some things that you can expect, uh, and all that jazz. So if you have any questions or comments about the devices or anything else I spoke about in this video, please leave them down below in the comments. If you have a portable washer and dryer, I would love to know, as well as if you have any other portable appliances. I actually had also a while ago a portable dishwasher, but because I'm only one person, it was like, um, you have to leave your dirty dishes in the dishwasher for a gross amount of time for there to be enough dishes to run the dishwasher. So it just wasn't a good look for me as a single person. But if you have any other kind of weird, small, portable appliances, I'd love to hear about it. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the channel, leave them down below. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Stay safe. And until next time. Bye.